Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain and today I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite games published by Fantasy Flight. So if you're into collecting modern board games, you probably know Fantasy Flight. They're one of the biggest brands in modern gaming. Uh, they used to be their own independent company, often referred to as the house that Twilight Imperium built because it was their first big hit. But now they are a division of Asmodee, though the brand is still alive uh, and functions as a semi-autonomous division with its own management and still puts out plenty of games. In the, in the modern gaming space, they probably have had the largest number of new titles under their brand of any brand in modern gaming. So before we get into my top 10 list, I do want to say I've got a bunch of links in the description down below for you to check out at your leisure. There's a link to BoardGameCaptain.com, which is a great hub for all things Board Game Captain. And also Lynn and I have started doing some semi-regular blog posts over there, so check that out. In addition, there is a link to my Patreon if you're in a position to and would like to help out the channel. And if you'd like to get yourself some cool Board Game Captain merch, some cool gamer gear, t-shirts, mugs, etc., there is a link to our Teespring store also in the description down below. All right, so now without any further ado, we're going to jump right into the list with my number 10. Number 10. So my number 10 game on my top 10 favorite games of Fantasy Flight Games list is one of their living card games. Uh, it just happens to be the one that I got into. I'm, I'm pretty sure they were all probably pretty good. It was it seemed like an interesting format, but there was only one that I had specifically you know gotten whole hog into, and that was the Call of Cthulhu Living Card Game. So the concept of a living card game was that they were they would have a base set that was a big board game sized box that had a bunch of cards in it, and then they would regularly put out expansions, and each expansion would contain all the cards for that expansion. So that all you needed to do was buy uh, the expansion. Though early on, you had, sometimes had to buy a few copies to get enough cards to have the limit there was for deck building. I, th I believe the limit in Call of Cthulhu was you could have three copies of any given card. Uh, in the expansions early on, some cards there were only one of, so you might have had to buy three copies of the expansion if you wanted to get enough of those rarer cards to be able to do it. But otherwise, it kind of functions sort of like a collectible card game. And in the case of the Call of Cthulhu living card game, this was a game that actually was a collectible card game first and then later was revived as a living card game. Uh, the game was really cool. You had different areas that you had to fight over on the board. And while combat was a part of it, actually one of the interesting things was investigation could sometimes be more important than combat. Doing investigation, having a high level of investigation, could actually win you more tokens towards winning a particular mystery out on the board. You had to win the most mysteries to win the game. So it was very different from a lot of other collectible card games or living card games out there because the goal wasn't just to beat up on your opponent. Um, you were fighting over these specific cards in the middle of the game and you wanted to to win the most of the cards to get them which is really pretty interesting it was a really cool concept uh i bought a lot of expansions to this got really into it for a while it's been a while since i played it now but just based on how many times i played it i had to this had to make my list because actually i played this game a lot i even bought the optional little cthulhu statues uh which you could use to mark when using certain resources and such which which you know was really cool. So there you have it. My number 10 is the Call of Cthulhu Living Card Game. Number 9. My number 9 is another card game, though not one of the living card games. Uh, this is Keyforge. Keyforge was a game designed by Richard Garfield, the man who invented the collectible card game format when he created Magic the Gathering. Uh, but this is not that. This was him trying to create something new and different and unique. Uh, this was a case of him creating a card game where instead of collecting cards, you collect decks. Each deck is completely unique, even down to the fact that it has a unique backing. You do no deck building. You just buy the decks, and then you play them. You figure out which decks are your favorite, and those are the ones you're going to use. The the game itself is is both a really interesting and unique concept, especially considering that that the way of making each of these these 
deck's unique, even the card back's unique, it's something that can only be done with modern technology, can only be done fairly recently, but it's also all a really fun game where you're trying to uh, collect points to make keys. Uh, the game itself played very similar to a lot of the straight-up battle games of the past, like Magic the Gathering. It definitely had some similarities, but uh, they, they streamlined a lot of it, took out the resource cards like lands are for Magic the Gathering to produce mana. You don't have any of those. Uh, instead, there was a much cleaner resource system, makes the game much faster, smoother, more streamlined, and in my opinion, actually, for this day and age, more fun. Uh, this game is still alive and well and is is doing quite well, actually. And they've done a bunch of uh, new sets with new bunches of random decks for you to buy. And Keyforge is, is a really fun game, and that's why it made my list as my number nine favorite Fantasy Flight game. Number eight... My number eight favorite Fantasy Flight game is one that I've only tried recently, actually, but I've really taken to it. It is Gear World. Gear World is a kind of steampunk post-apocalyptic game where you have people living in these floating cities, but they're not really what the game is about. But they are the upper crust of society. The rest of us, what the game is about, live on the surface of the planet. And we are building structures for them and fighting over land to be able to build these structures to feed them energy so they can keep living in their sky cities. Uh, the game is an area control game and there is some combat, but combat actually takes a back seat to logistics and trade because you have to do a whole lot of trading with your opponents and also logistics, moving the resources around because you can't just, when you, when you, get resources you don't just get them in front of you they're in territories on the board and you have to build logistics network networks on the board to move the resources to the appropriate locations where you want to build something uh, and logistics networks can be built like a pony express by having a lot of horses on the board or they can be built using uh, steam powered river boats or sea ships um, there, are, there are lots of interesting ways to, to possibly maneuver things around the board. Uh, you can also very slowly move them around by foot. Of course, that, though, takes a lot longer. Uh, and the goal of the game is to build three of these big towers that transfer energy up to the people in the Sky Cities. And if you're the first player to do that, you win the game of Gear World. Gear World is a, a really unique feeling game. You look at it and you think, oh, this is just going to be another area control game, but then it's, it's really not. There's some very unique and interesting mechanics in here, and that's why it made it down to my number eight favorite Fantasy Flight game. Number seven. My number seven favorite game from Fantasy Flight Studios is Rune Wars. Now, not the newer Rune Wars tabletop miniature game they had done a little while back, but the original 4X fantasy game. Now, this is, is a game that, even though it's this high on my list, is not actually still in my collection because, unfortunately, there it's a big 4X game and there were, there were a number of similarities to the bigger 4X game from Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, you know which one I'm talking about. So there definitely were a lot of comparisons between the two. And even though I liked this game a lot, unfortunately, it very rarely hit the table over the other game, which, of course, is Twilight Imperium. That said, I did really enjoy this one. I just didn't like it as much as Twilight Imperium. That might be a bit of a spoiler. That's something that Twilight Imperium might be higher on my list. But um, there you have it. But Room Wars was a really cool game with tons of, of, of miniatures of different monsters. And you moved around and you were conquering this fantasy world on this giant hex map. And you were exploring, expanding, exploiting, and exterminating, which are, of course, the four X's. Yeah, uh, Rune Wars was a lot of fun. It was a big all-day affair. It usually took like six to eight hours to play, uh, but it was a very enjoyable game, and I liked they had these little personal dashboards for controlling your factions, and it came with four starting factions uh, for you to be able to control, which are standard sort of fantasy races. Really cool game. Very enjoyable experience. I think it's getting hard to find now, but if you do find a used copy of it, I do still highly recommend it, and that's why Rune Wars makes it all the way down to my number seven favorite Fantasy Flight game. Number six. 
My number six favorite fantasy flight game is Colossal Arena. This is a much smaller game than a lot of the other ones I've already been uh, uh, talking about. But this is a really interesting and unique sort of game where you're having this big um, gladiatorial combat in a coliseum. Uh, type uh, setting, but with fantasy monsters. Each of the contestants are a different monster. There's there's a minotaur and a dragon and a hydra and all sorts of different fantasy creatures. But the thing is this, you are not actually controlling those fantasy monsters. I tell you this setting and you might think, oh, okay, I get to be the minotaur. No, you're not. You are people in the stands wagering on which monsters are going to survive the entire melee. So you set wagers down and, and you do it based on a hand of cards you have. Because when you each round, and there are multiple rounds, you draw cards and the cards will be for the different monsters and have different numbers. And at the end of each round, the lowest numbers are eliminated and no, can no longer continue on to the next round, they die. So if you have the lowest number for a monster uh, that's possible, you might wager on it knowing I can play this first and I got higher numbers in here I can play later. I'm going to guarantee this monster survives at least this round. It's got a good chance to make it to the end. And the earlier you wager on a monster, the more that wager is worth on the end. At the end of the game, wagers on monsters that have survived earn you points, more points for the earlier in the game you wagered on them. Very interesting, unique sort of play style. Uh, I really like this one. I think it thoroughly holds up. And it's also, again, it really stands out because of how unique and interesting this game is. And that is why... Colossal Arena made it down to be my number six favorite fantasy flight game. Number five. My number five favorite fantasy flight game is Runebound. Runebound second edition specifically is the one that I have in my collection. I have never upgraded to third edition. Uh, I never felt the need to because I thought second edition was absolutely phenomenal. So Runebound is a sort of... Uh, uh, adventure game where each player is sort of doing a RPG light, but not with each other. You're you're off on your own, going on adventures, slaying monster, monsters, rescuing people, and eventually trying to uh, stop the resurrection of this evil dragon that that uh, the bad guys are trying to raise up from the dead. Um, it it has this big board, and you go on adventures. There's different dots all over the place that show the difficulties of the adventures. You start off going on on low level adventures, but as you go through and complete adventures, you will gain experience which allows you to boost your stats and also pick up equipment and uh, also other members to your party that will help you fight and complete harder adventures. This game is a lot of fun. Um, it is, uh, a, it's a game that's been in my collection at this point probably for, I don't know, somewhere between 16 and 20 years. And it still hits the table on occasion. Uh, Runebound is a fantastic game. I really enjoy it. Uh, I have toyed with the idea of, of upgrading to the new edition, but I, I also, at the same time, really feel like my version is so fantastic, I'm not sure if it would be improved on by upgrading to the new edition. If you out there have played both 2nd edition and the newer 3rd edition of Runebound, let me know if you think I should upgrade. Comment down below. But that is why Runebound makes it all the way down to my number 5 favorite fantasy Flight game. Number four. My number four favorite fantasy flight game is a big hex map battle strategy game, and it is Battle Lore. So Battle Lore is a game that uses a system that the designer has used throughout a, a quite a large number of games. So this is the only one I have using this system. It is a big hex map based game where you move your units around the map and try to take uh, hold points that earn you points. It's not just about killing all your opponents. You're trying to basically play King of the Hill and take these hold points to earn points towards winning. Um, you play cards to be able to move your units. Uh, cards might say like full assault, move one unit on the right flank, one unit on the left flank, one unit in the middle, or cavalry charge, move three cavalry units, or something like that. You can always, though, discard a card to move a single unit of your choice if you really need to activate a specific unit. In addition, one of the really cool things about this 
game is that each you and your opponent will choose a card at the beginning from amongst uh, a number that are dealt to you to be your half of the setup. The two cards go together and show you how to set up the board uh, and combined co create the scenario that you are going to play. This is a battle tactical game that is done a bit different and is very strategic and very unique and very different each time you play it. And again, is not just about killing your opponent. It has other goals. And that's part of why it's so awesome. And that is why Battle Lore, and specifically my version, I believe, is second edition Battle Lore, makes it down to my number four favorite Fantasy Flight game. Number three. My number three favorite Fantasy Flight game is a pickup and deliver game. Uh, pickup and deliver games are a lot of fun. I love the economics involved. I like the logistics involved. And this is one um, one of my favorites, actually. It's definitely one of, if not my my very favorite, uh, pickup and deliver game. And it is Merchant of Venus. Merchant of Venus is, a, is kind of a lighthearted, fun, sci-fi pickup and deliver game where you're flying around the galaxy picking up uh, people that need to be uh, brought to other places, picking up cargo and selling them at other ports, and you're trying to have the most successful business transporting goods and people around the galaxy. And this is a really, really fun game. Uh, very enjoyable, lots of tongue-in-cheek, uh, humorous people and things you can pick up. Uh, really, really fun mechanics. I have never had anyone dislike Merchant of Venus, and that is why Merchant of Venus makes it all the way down to my number three favorite game from Fantasy Flight Games. Number two. My number two favorite game is a tabletop miniature game. Uh, there are quite a few tabletop miniature games usually involving Star Wars that have been published by Fantasy Flight Games. And this is one of those. This is Star Wars Armada. It's the only one of the group that I got really into specifically. Uh, and I really love it. Uh, I have every ship ever created for the factions from the original Star Wars movie series. So I have all the stuff from the Empire and the Rebels. Uh, they have started now putting out factions from the Clone Wars. Though I haven't started collecting those. I'm kind of debating on whether or not I'm going to. Because I really like the original factions. But this game is fantastic. It is, an, it is very deep strategy. Very tactical. Uh, the fine minutia of maneuvering your ships and taking your shots and, and figuring out when to activate your ships and also the incredible strategy of deciding what upgrades and what crew members to put on each ship is is huge and, and it can really mean the difference between victory and death. I absolutely adore Star Wars Armada. It is one of my favorite tabletop miniature games. Really enjoy it. Uh, and if you have not tried it but you are a big fan of sci-fi space battles, I highly recommend Star Wars Armada to you, and that's why I made it all the way down to my number two favorite game from Fantasy Flight Games. And now it is time for number one. My number one favorite game from Fantasy Flight Games, obviously a game I am a huge fan of. I do a lot of content for it on my channel. So if you watch a lot of stuff on my channel, this is probably going to be absolutely no surprise to you. But it is my favorite 4X game of all time. It is my favorite War Strategy game of all time. It is my favorite giant Hexmack game of all time. It is my favorite game of all time. And it is Twilight Imperium 4th Edition specifically. Absolutely adore Twilight Imperium. It is a game with a ludicrous number of factions where you you at the beginning of the game each of you pick a faction and you will slowly expand out into the galaxy taking over planets fighting wars using politics and economics to outmaneuver your opponent eventually trying trying to take control of mechatol rex the planet at the center of the galaxy which was the former seat of the last empire and eventually trying to get enough victory points to win and become the new rulers of the galaxy I absolutely adore Twilight Imperium, and even though it is a game that takes all day to play, it is hands down my favorite game of all time. I'm going to say that again. My favorite game of all time. Highly recommend Twilight Imperium if you are someone who likes long, epic, involved, awesome, day-long experiences. A game where you have to set up ordering a pizza in the middle of it. Uh, or going out to dinner in the middle of it, because that is something I often do when I get to play Twilight Imperium, then I highly recommend it for you. It is really, really, bar none, in my opinion, the most immersive gaming experience I have ever had is while playing Twilight Imperium. 
there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite games from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, if I missed any that maybe I've never tried or, or maybe, maybe I wasn't a fan of that are your favorite games from Fantasy Flight Games, feel free to comment down below. Let me know what are your favorite games from Fantasy Flight Games. And if you enjoyed this top 10 list and you'd like to see me do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.